Hey folks, well, doing a bit of a restoration video on this little Lexmoto. Uh, it's a Lexmoto Street um, DFE 125-8A, I do believe is the actual designation for this vehicle. The model number. Um, if you people know this bike, you'll notice there's a few things that are, that, that well, do not match this bike. Uh, one of them being is the wiring harness. It's been changed. Looks like uh, someone throughout this bike's life has swapped the wiring harness out um, from one from off a uh, Lexmoto Vixen. Uh, the clocks, for instance, are not Lexmoto um, street clocks. They are definitely Vixen clocks. Um, this would have been the notifications, you know, the notifications, you know what I mean. Uh, and you would have had here a gear select indicator. Um, now none of that is working at the moment. Uh, the plug obviously is down there. Not plugged in. Um, the frame numbers and the engine numbers and everything else matches, which is nice. Uh, missing a few parts. So yeah, I bought this bike from a place where I work, a scrapyard, uh, for £40. With the intent of just doing it up and selling it on. I haven't got a CBT in, this, in the UK. You have the thing um, to ride one of these bikes. You need a CBT and you're allowed to ride this bike on a provisional driving license. Um, but I do have a car license, and my car license, I've actually got the requirements to ride up to 49 cc's. That can be geared or automatic. This is obviously a geared bike. Uh, so I can't really ride this unless I pay about 200 pounds and do a CBT, which is a day out of my life and I just can't be bothered doing that. Uh, so I bought it with the intention of just selling it on. Uh, when I got this bike it had no key with it so I've bought new locks um, not from a street because you can't get lock sets for these anymore. That's actually from a Lexmoto FVS or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure, but whatever. It works with, few, with a few modifications. The seat remover, you know, which is usually where your key is to undo your seat, that was actually snapped off on this bike, but as you can see, I've just drilled a small hole here and put a, the keyway just there, and that will remove the seat. So when I got this, the parts that were missing off this bike, there was quite a few, there was no headlights. Um, the engine didn't run due to a wiring issue, which ended up being just plugs not plugged in and plugged in the wrong way. Sorry about the wind noise if that's getting bad. I actually got washing out to dry, which, <laughs> yeah, it's getting in the way a little bit, but it's fine. Uh, obviously the front mudguard is missing, which I've ordered a generic one for that. It, it looks like it'll fit quite nice. I've ordered two actually, just in case. Um, obviously there was no key, so you had to effectively hot wire it, not really much hot wiring on these kind of things, but effectively no kickstart on this thing either, so you know, I had to do a few things to try and get the ignition to run and eventually figured out how it all works. Um, it's, yeah, the wiring is, is pretty much sorted, although I've got to tidy it up and put bomb connectors on, or spade terminal connectors. Things like for the indicators, which is what this lot's for here. It's actually for that horrible thing. It would have been a nice indicator when it was new, but the water's got into it and it doesn't work properly anymore. And We've got an indicator there that's knackered. Uh, we do have a very nice... Oh, £12.50 that was. Really cheap. Um, a headlight there, a reflector base headlight. Uh, which comes with the base as well, so I've just started to fit. Uh, and that's got DRLs built into it and all sorts of stuff. Plus it comes with a nice um, a nice H4 bulb, which that's only 35 watt bulb in there, which you could soon upgrade that to 55, which would be quite nice, get some decent lighting on this thing. I don't know how that's going to perform. I'm hoping it provides a nice beam pattern, but 
it's not, uh, I mean, technically it probably shouldn't be on the UK roads because it's not e-stamped, but uh, it was a cheap light, uh, which must meet some requirements somewhere. And the fact it's got a nice H4 bulb in there should mean that the beam pattern should be relatively good. The reflector looks like it's designed in such a way that it will have a decent beam pattern. Um, <clears throat> we'll see. Uh, the beam patterns aren't really that necessary on these bikes. Let's face it, when you're on a bike, you, your beam's jumping around all over the place anyway. Uh, it just means it just needs to be set at the right angle, either too high or too low. Which on this is dead easy to do, you just grab the light and just turn it. Obviously, make sure it's tightened up. Uh, one thing I did with the light, it comes with these nice bolts. Um, all I added was a, was a washer on the inside, uh, just to just so the nut actually hits something and not just the plastic pulls the plastic off. It looks like it's going to be a nice light. I mean, I didn't expect the backing to be plastic, but um, the front bezel is actually steel. So yeah, it looks like it's going to be quite nice that. Um, I, did, I didn't buy it with the intention of having the indicators, they just came with it. But the fact the indicators are on the, on the sides have got three wires tells me that that's going to be a, uh, a DRL as well. I've not powered it up, but it'll be a surprise when we get it up and running. Um, the charging system is work, works on this. The There was, oh there you go, there's a rectifier down there that came with it. Um, I assume that rectifier was the original one to the bike. Like I say, there's a lot of wires on this that have been interfered with. But as soon as I figured out what the wiring collars do, um, the impressive thing was that I downloaded a manual for this bike and there was no, uh, there was absolutely no, the wiring collars didn't match up to the manual. So anyway, I looked on the, uh, the Vixen, and the wiring colours match up perfectly to the Vixen, so it, someone must have put the wiring harness from the Vixen onto this bike, along with the clocks. Now going back on the MOT history, which you can do here in the UK, use the rego plate, you can see that the mileage on these clocks kind of line up perfectly, there's no discrepancies, there's no excessive steps or anything. So either there were clocks that had the relatively the same mileage on from another bike um, I don't know if it was crashed or what not everything seems straight on this um, in terms of crash damage there isn't really any crash damage to this bike I mean we've got damaged plastics which could have happened any old hell um, the rear light is most definitely aftermarket again no e-stamps on that kidder but well the DMOT test has never really usually bothered. I have my keys on me. I've got my keys from my car. Hang on a minute. Let me just take these off the key ring. Hopefully this will be an easy to do with one hand. Not everything else wants to come off with it when I drop the keys. Okay. Yeah, new keys. Key goes in. Oh yeah, I put the steering lock on. Oh, it's difficult to do with one hand. Let me see if I can juggle this. With that side lights work. That's good. Turn them off. Push the key down. That needs to get out of the way. So there we go. Right, there we go. Managed to get the ignition on. And this thing usually starts up really well. Now it's cold, obviously. It's. I mean, I'm in a t-shirt, but it's about 16 degrees. Oh, if I can get it to go back a bit, there we go. Yeah, there's side stands and everything's on the floor because the springs were missing. I've ordered some new ones. Uh, let's see how it starts, shall we? So, engine is on, ignition is on. No choke. If I rev it, it will it will bog down. But as soon as it's warm. It starts up lovely, I've not turned the fuel on, it's just running on what's in the, in the carby bowl. It smells like it's catted. Definitely smells like it's got a cat in the exhaust. Why on the carbureted bike have you'd have that, I don't know. But it smells like it. It starts and runs quite nice. Like I say, if I try and rev it, it'll cut out. Unless I do it very slowly. I 
soon as that was warmed up, that was, the throttle response is quite quite good on that. But uh, we don't need the engine running. Um, oops. That's what remains of the old gear linkage. Needless to say, that's been replaced. There's absolutely no nylon bushing ends in there whatsoever anymore. That one's completely disappeared. They were held together with zip ties, keeping them together. The play in the gear selector was impressive, and trying to find neutral on this thing was, oh, one hell of a task. Because obviously my neutral finding light doesn't work anymore either, um, which sits here. But not just, just because the ball's removed, just because there's wires that it should go to the neutral, they are missing. Um, yeah, another thing is as well that neutral light needs to be rewired in because uh, it wires into multiple different things. And uh, I'm hoping, uh, I don't know how this works on this bike, but I'm hoping that on this bike, this is obviously the plug which indicates what gear you're in. This is your gear selector. Now on the little uh, LED display on the Vixen, this would actually have a little uh, LED display, segment display. And when you go through the gears, it tells you what gear you're in. And I'm hoping that the, um, the light which gives you your neutral also goes through this plug. I need to get my tester out to test this, but I'm hoping, well, I know that that is a 12 volt input when the ignition's on. I know by the wire color. So power goes into this, and I'm hoping that in here, there's all switches inside the gear compartment, and it runs power through the gear switches, and that puts power through this block, and that's what tells you what gear you're in. Like I say, I'm just hoping that that has got you know, the neutral in there. Now I have looked online for a replacement dash, but there is one eBay seller that's uh, breaking a Vixen, and he wants something ridiculous like 300 pounds for the dash, uh, just for this uh, just just for this se section here, which is a plastic section with left, right, turn, uh, which all works on this might I add. Left, right. And you've got your high beams as well, which um, uh, they did. Oh, it helps if you put your lights on, I suppose. High beams that oh, don't work anymore. I wonder if that's because I've unplugged. Oh, it's because I've unplugged the the handlebars. Um, the little switch that goes in between the two. <laughs> um, there's a lot of stuff I need to do on the wiring on this, like I say, but it'll be a perfectly working bike when I'm done. It was fun getting the ignition switch to work. Um, it would only start when it was in um, it w with the uh, the lock on sometimes, and I had to change the pins around. Use my little pin removal tool, swap the pins around in the plug. Eventually, I figured it out how it works. It works nice. Probably do some new grips with this thing. This, the grips on this are a bit ratty and nasty. So I'll get some new grips on order as well. Uh, that one's pretty good. If I can find the matching grip for that online, I think I'll just get away with replacing that one. But, yeah. It's, uh, it's a good little bike. And we've just got to fix all the little faults it's got. Suspension works good. Chain and drive is brand new. Uh, the sprockets, chains, and even the sprocket in the engine is brand new, which is nice. Uh, battery, don't know the age of the battery, but it holds a charge for ages, so I guess it's a good battery. And of course you can always bump start this, being a, uh, a geared bike, which is nice. Um, got a foot peg on order for it. I do need to do a bit of welding on the exhaust. Because you can see there's that brown patch, black patch down here. Exhaust is breaking through from this clamp and coming out the sides and I just need to just need to weld that seam up and then the edges of the exhaust just to clear that uh, I don't think an exhaust leak on a bike motorcycle matters really because it's well <laughs> it's already outside in the open it's not like you're sat inside an enclosed space um, but yeah other things that I've just got to make nice is oh I've already done that 
make sure the cable's not hitting the exhaust and just tidy up the wiring in general. You're going to get some nice of that, you know, crinkly tube that you can get. I'm going to put that over that. Mind it with tape and then put that over it first. Uh, people's wiring, like I say, this is definitely a spliced in. We've got some lovely cut insulation there that I need to repair. Um, get rid of this insulation tape and put some shrink wrap over it. I think it'll be quite nice. It'll be a good bike when it's done, I think. Um, and I'm probably going to be sad to sell it, but like I say, my license doesn't let me do it. I could do it, but I'm just not willing to keep doing my, my CBT every two years. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Oh, brakes are good as well. <laughs> thanks for watching, and uh, oh, we'll see the update on this bike, hopefully when it's complete. All the bits I've done to it. Peace out.